European strategic autonomy is goal number one for our generation. The EU imports 90% of rare earths and magnesium it uses from China. Well, the big question is, um, um, can you have open strategic autonomy without own resources? Open strategic autonomy. Really, it's the capacity that uh, a political community has to decide for itself, uh, its rules, uh, its, its future. It started really more uh, in the defense and security field, but now it's a broader concept that touches upon technology, even food chains, energy, obviously. Uh, why open? Because the European Union, they, they don't want to be fully independent. They still believe that there should be interdependence, but not too many dependencies. The context leads to that, uh, and it's not only the war in, uh, in Ukraine uh, that of course has shaped the geopolitical uh, landscape in Europe and beyond, but even before that, the great power rivalry between the United States and China, the arrival of Trump with a much more aggressive policy vis-à-vis -vis the European Union, uh, withdrawing, for example, from the Iran agreement and using the extraterritoriality that the United States has, its immense strategic uh, power that it has to curtail uh, business with, with Iran for, for European uh, companies. And not least as well, the pandemic uh, and uh, kind of, you know, the realization that on basic issues like uh, paracetamol or masks, we were highly dependent on, on China. On one side, it has a strong alliance with the United States. It's the security guarantor of, of uh, the European Union, and, and that has become obvious now with the war in Ukraine again. On the other hand, we have a very strong commercial relationship with China, especially certain countries, in particular Germany. Uh, and so the European Union needs to find the balance. And they still believe in that there can be this three-phase uh, approach to, uh, to China, right? I mean, since 2019, uh, there's an agreement in the European Union that we treat China in three ways, right? As, as a partner in many different areas of global economic governance, as a competitor in all economic sectors, um, and as a, a systemic rival, because uh, China has a different political system. But I think overall what we have experienced uh, over the past years is certain vulnerabilities of the European Union in certain key areas. Dependencies on China on rare earths, rare earths that are very important, for example, in the energy transition. And then on the other side, you know, this very strong vulnerability or dependencies we have on, on US tech. We use Google or Twitter or Facebook or we Zoom or we use Microsoft Teams uh, to where do we store our data, you know, what cloud services we use uh, to semiconductors. ASML, this Dutch company that uh, produces machines that are key in the production of semiconductors, uh, is now under huge pressure uh, from the United States uh, that they should not deliver their best equipment uh, to China. Well, I think what comes next is uh, several things. One is regulation, and uh, you know the European Union is quite good at it. Uh, regulation of uh, digital markets, regulation as well that might lead to, uh, uh, for example, the Chips Act. Uh, you know, to produce uh, semiconductors at home. Uh, there will be as well a debate more and more about uh, central fiscal capacities. I mean, we had the first issuance of joint debt to overcome the effects of the pandemic, right? This was an historic moment, the next generation EU funds. Uh, and now we are discussing perhaps to have a, a sovereign, a sovereign European fund. Uh, what do we do now with energy? Uh, do we buy energy together, gas together? How we invest more together in this green transition? And strength, you have Spain with its kind of renewable energy and possible hydrogen. France with its food production, big companies of France that are in the big leagues, uh, in banking, in nuclear energy, for example. Luxury products, obviously. Germany with its industrial might, its Mittelstand, you know, the so-called hidden champions. The Nordic countries with uh, strong innovation and, uh, and high well-being. Uh, you have in, in luxury products as well, 
a lot of this Italian in machinery, household items, etc. At some point, we will need to, to, to um, discussions around all resources, which is euphemism, uh, you know, for European taxes. Uh, and that's really the heart of sovereignty, right? By the way, if you start taxing people, the European Union, if it wants to stay a union uh, uh, at some point, and the last 10 years have shown it, uh, needs to have more fiscal central resources.